Hello and welcome to Sport and 7 on City 7 TV. We bring you the new episode from the Maidan Racecourse, which has been home for the Emirates racing season in the new year with the Dubai World Cup Carnival. First up, let's have a look at what's in store on the show. On this month's Sport on 7, we bring you all the sporting action hosted here in the UAE during the month of January. We'll begin the show from the Dubai World Cup Carnival. We also catch the highlights of the inaugural Desert T20, followed by the HSBC Abu Dhabi Golf Championship, before concluding with the Dubai Marathon. So let's start the show with the Dubai World Cup Carnival, which features a prize purse of $10.9 million across 10 races leading up to the world's richest horse race at the end of March. Towards the end of January, the fourth Dubai World Cup Carnival featured a race card of $1 million, as well as a very special 200th win for Godolphin's trainer, Said bin Saru. The fourth night of the Dubai World Cup Carnival turned out to be a total domination by Team Godolphin after winning five of the seven races, gaining valuable points for the leaderboard. The night offered an attractive pair of Group 2 races with the 2,200-metre Al Rashidiya, which is pretty much a preparation for the Group 1 $6 million Dubai Duty Free race on the World Cup night, along with the Group 2 Cape Verde. Dominated by Mike de Kock over the last five years, the sixth consecutive win in the Rashidiya race was denied by Godolphin's promising run, the only filly among the seven runners, producing a career-best effort to win by half length from Mike de Kock trained Light the Lights. Ben Soro's winning ways continued with a stunning win in the Group 2 Cape Verde, thanks to Very Special, which was also a successful defence off the ground and earning the trainer his 200th carnival win. It's a strong race with the Colts. Uh, she's a filly, I mean, she kept improving this filly. She did well in Europe. Um, Saeed Ben Soro always does uh, well with the fillies. Um, we thought she's going to run very well. Um, maybe second she Mohammed Ben Khalifa's horse is a tough horse, but I mean, uh, with her winning here, we are very happy. Uh, you know, Mike. Mike is a, I mean, he's a top trainer. Also, Said. Said is a world top trainer. Uh, he knows his horses. Usually, he gets them first time out ready. Um, I mean, I'm not surprised the filly have uh, won the race. She's uh, she's a very good filly. The race night also featured the Guinness 2000 trial, which is a build-up to the Group 1 race in Newmarket. Godolphin were winners again in the UAA 2000 Guinness trial, which was won by Charlie Appleby trained Fly at Dawn. The three-year-old horse continued his form of last year, where he registered three wins out of six outings, which also included a win during his Newmarket debut. Godolphin trainer Charlie Appleby was able to secure three wins during the night. Any winners needed. It's always nice to have a winner, but... Um... The horses are in good form. Uh, that was our second winner, as you say, this evening, so um, that was nice. This horse will go to the Guineas now. Um, he, uh, he, was, he finished second round here before Christmas, and uh, he used that experience tonight, and uh, it's pleasing to see him get his head in front. For golfing, it's, it's important we support this you know, this carnival, and it's, it's been very good to us, and um, it's a good calibre of racing. It's very competitive, um, and therefore we feel I mean, we should be here. And, and you know, Saeed's had a winner tonight, and uh, we... we Myself and Sai both came in with a strong hand tonight. We had, we had plenty of bullets to, to fire and, and, and horses on the, on the book were always going to be competitive. During the month of January, the UAE played host to the inaugural Desert T20 tournament, featuring eight associate teams. Though the home side failed to get through the group stages, the UAE stadiums turned into home grounds of Afghanistan, who lifted the trophy in front of a large crowd of 15,000 spectators. It was a cricket festival in the UAE throughout the month of January, as a total of eight associate teams battled it out during the inaugural T20 tournament. It was a disappointing tournament for the home team UAE, who finished third in their group, with only a win against Namibia to their name. Scotland and Oman advanced to the semi-finals from Group B, who had to face the top two sides of Group A, Afghanistan and Ireland, in the semi-finals. Afghanistan staged a dominating performance during the final day after beating Oman by eight wickets, which was followed by a powerful display against Ireland. Ireland won the toss and opted to bat first, and the hopes of a high score were washed away by the Afghani spin attack as they crumbled to a small total of 71 runs. In response, it was the Afghani fireworks by Mohammad Shahzad that steered the Afghanis over the line to reach the target in 7.5 overs. 
The win meant a fitting farewell to the former captain and legend Nauroz Mangal. Everything, the big name, Nauroz Mangal, the name which is given to me is by because of my country, Afghanistan. That I played for Afghanistan and Afghanistan gave me this name. So thanks to everyone. Without the support of these people in Afghanistan, I would be nothing. So I really uh, am proud of myself, my country, that I have represented my country as international cricket and finished well respected. For sure. Now you've been moving on to becoming a chief selector for the side. Now you've seen the team and the, the style of cricket change from a higher strike rate now, especially being India, your home crowd. So do you think now it's a time for players like Mohammad Shahzad to step up and more Mohammad Shahzads to be born within the Afghan side? Is it, is it all about explosive batting and higher strike rates now? He's played very well for Afghanistan. He is also one of the senior players for Afghanistan. He's a taking batsman. Definitely, he should take the job on his shoulder uh, too. And as you know, cricket, as you mentioned, is now there is lots of new new shots, new variation from the batsman coming that you can never expect. So definitely, yeah. But you should you we, we should admire that that Afghans are very quick learner, and everything, every new shots coming, they learn very quickly. As you know, that they are that these three players now. B. Rashid and Sheza, they've been played in uh, BPL recently and they've been offered in PSL as well. And also they should play in IPL in such big leagues. So they can share dressing room with other international players and coaches, different stuff. So they can share, bring those experience back to our dressing room and can share with other junior players, which can give you most positive uh, energy, big positive energy to play well and play a key role as a main player in your team. Actually, now Pakistan plays the home great crowd, home games over here. Now they don't attract a huge crowd as much as Afghanistan does. So, what is the secret behind getting a huge Afghan support to, to your games? In Afghanistan, uh, we have only the leading sport, and that is cricket. So, cricket, uh, cricket really played, and not only it's not only a game in Afghanistan, but it's played a key role in peace, stability, and the happiness of people. So, this is the only source for Afghans uh, in Afghanistan nowadays that they have cricket team who is doing phenomenal job in an elite level so definitely this is the energy which uh, uh, comes from uh, from them and boost us to play well for them because we are sharing this happiness winning the tournaments winning the matches and they are watching us observing us very closely so this is the kind of energy and this is a wonderful game nowadays a great game uh, of cricket the leading sports in Afghanistan we are the government uh, like non-government and the public support only cricket so it is yeah a very big game now, in a very famous game in Afghanistan, and that's why the people expect only this happiness through winning, and we are doing for them. It is large crowd support that creates the excitement surrounding Afghanistan's games hosted in the UAE, with thousands of loyal fans flocking over to catch their stars in action. Commenting on the win, fans were hopeful that their team can become a major international side in the next few years. I'm really pleased with the team performance, particularly from the in-form Nabi who has continued to impress with this spin bowling. Our field has made a big improvement which is great to see. We have been playing really well recently and it has been amazing to see our legend Naros Mangal perform well and retire in a good way. Looking ahead, I think Afghanistan can become a world class team if our key players like Najibullah, Nabi and Shahzad continue to perform highly. I see a very bright future for our team. I am here with my family to enjoy the atmosphere of the stadium. We are all very proud to see our team performing well and I wish them all the best in their next tournament in India. Well, that's it from the Cricket Stadium and the racetracks of Maidan. We'll now be taking a short break. And when we come back, we head over to Abu Dhabi for the HSBC Abu Dhabi Golf Championships.